Well, Rob, Christian, thanks ever so much uh, for joining us here in the Hive Live studio. It's great to have you. Um, Rob, we'll come to you first. I think, you know, the fans are really passionate about Watford being a family club. I think they think they know maybe what the trust does. Um, but for those that don't, just start by giving us an overview uh, of the wonderful work that you do. So the trust really is about um, improving lives and enhancing communities. And a lot of people would think that we're purely about football but we're about so much more than that. So we run and deliver a whole range of projects, uh, initiatives, events, and activities that basically try and use sport, football, physical activity, and learning to improve lives and make a difference. And Christian, what does that look like then day to day? Well, I suppose it's probably looked a little bit different, hasn't it, in the last 11 months or so, but let's say in normal times yeah. first. In normal times, to be fair, is. Um incredibly varied because we do have such a, a wide range of programs really and activities that we do in the community um, like what we're saying there we have we have things like health um, so it may be that we have some adults coming along to, to maybe lose weight or manage their weight um, but then you might come along to another session that's perhaps the older generation that'll be there um, a bit of reminiscence work um, those sorts of things and then like I say you go to another session it'll be youngsters uh, who basically just want to get some football in yeah. um, and they can come along meet their mates all those sorts of things in a normal time um, and then I guess the second part of that question around what it's like now it's just a case of how we can keep that community feel that coming together how we can create that basically virtually or um, over the phone those sorts of things really so yeah. as long as we're, we're keeping that community feel going I guess that's the, that's the main thing. Yeah and we'll come on to that uh, in a moment but Rob it was only a couple of years ago wasn't it that the trust passed a, a really big milestone and when you look back to where it all began really initially having employed just one person you must be so proud of where it's at now. Yeah absolutely but I think it's also acknowledging what happened really before that you know in the fact that really this is a legacy of Graham Taylor and Sir Elton John in terms of you know, generating that family and community ethos at the football club and really it's the, it's the trust that's been able to, it's been the um, mechanism really to carry that legacy on. Yeah. So um, yeah, we've gone from one person in a broom cupboard at the top of Occupation Road to just short of 60 odd full and part time wow. plus 50 to 100 sort of sessional workers as well. Yeah, and it must be so rewarding, you know, just to see how much the local communities um, benefit from the trust existence. I think a lot of fans saw that firsthand in the social impact report. Have you had any first had fee feedback or anything? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we've, had, we've had one literally this morning, haven't we? I know uh, it probably looks like we set this up, but literally came in this morning, and Robert found that we just got a, a letter that uh, that came in from a from a fan. Um, I don't know if you wanted yeah. to have it on yeah. set you yeah. up. Yeah. Kind of, uh, Seventy years as a fan. Um, just basically reflecting, saying thank you for uh, the copy uh, of the impact report. He took great delight in reading it and reflecting on it. Um, and he was really pleased to see that actually, you know, we were um, carrying Graham's legacy on yeah. um, and really proud of the football club. So um, that was really nice to, to see. It's really, uh, it makes our jobs worthwhile when, yeah. when we get that kind and of response. Yeah. That social impact report, if you haven't read it already, please do, because it, it is a beacon of light, isn't it, in, in these difficult times that, that everyone um, is facing. And actually, on that subject, we've touched on it a little bit, but how tough has it been for the Trust over the last 11 months or so, Rob? Yeah, it's been, it's, I'd be lying if I said it hasn't been tough, um, and I think it has for, for lots of people, lots of organisations, especially lots of charities as well. So. You know, we have lost a significant amount of income through uh, the previous lockdowns. Uh, that makes our work that much more difficult. But I think the positives that have come out of it is that we've really got extremely passionate um, staff, volunteers, yeah. trustees, patrons. Um, and that's enabled them to kind of think quickly, be flexible, be agile in the way they do things. So we've been able to adapt a lot of our programmes. Um, but it's also been tough, you know, it's been tough on everyone and our staff have felt that as well, especially um, this current lockdown as well. It's felt like a really long period. Yeah. So we're just trying to encourage them to, to stay passionate. You know, they've got a purpose. They understand what the trust is about and what it's trying to achieve. And they're doing everything they can. One of our values is um, around innovation. So they're really good at being creative in the way that they're kind of 
um, delivering the programmes in a different way just to keep people engaged and inspired. Yeah, I suppose that's what we're doing here on Hive Live or trying to. It's about bringing people together virtually uh, if we have to, Christian, which you touched on a little bit earlier. You've been adapting some of the programmes to make sure that you can still reach out to your communities. Yeah, most definitely. And, and again, it's um, where we've got a variety of programmes. We obviously have a variety of audiences as well and how you can engage in that. So there's obviously challenges even in that and that in terms of whether they have internet at home and those sorts of things. So we've had to really, really test those creative um, creative juices, I guess, within our staff and, and like I said, our volunteers as well. Um, but the, the, the outcome is, is worth it. Um, yeah. Obviously, there's still going to be challenges and I think it's important that we, we sort of understand that as well. But if we can bring a little bit of a little bit of a smile to someone's face, then it's, it's incredibly, yeah, incredibly rewarding. Um, like even this week, we've had a few phone calls that we've we've been part of with some of the players here, uh, the academy, and some of the women's players as well. Um, doing a phone call with some of our younger players, just both in terms of giving them a bit of advice, maybe about a bit of learning for themselves, so they're still gaining something in that aspect. But then they're also ultimately just getting a little lift yeah. when you get a phone call from someone that you're not quite expecting. Um, uh, yeah, it gives everyone a everyone a lift, including us uh, on the on the call. Absolutely. Just to wrap up briefly, Rob, if any fans are watching or listening to this and they do want to help or lend their support to the Trust, how can they do that? Lots of different ways. Um, we're always looking for volunteers. Um, if people are doing any fundraising events, then obviously if they choose us as their charity, that would be fantastic. People can donate to the Trust. It's not always about money, but obviously that, that helps. Um, so there's lots of different ways. Um, we've, we've got a Friends of the Trust uh, newsletter that's second edition is, is out. So if people you know, want to know more about the work that we do and support us, then it's a, a case of signing up for that as well. Stop, don't go anywhere. Click here for more videos.